Hello, I'm Dr. Jillian Roberts, and I'm very happy to reach out to you today from Victoria, British Columbia. And I'm responding to an email that I received from Ms. Rammer, or Raymer, um, from Shepherd Public School and Lackner Woods Public School in Ontario. So I'm, I'm very happy to read one of my books for you um, on the playground, our first talk about prejudice. This was a very, very important book for me to write um, because growing up, I don't think I was as respectful as I could have been to children in, around me that might have been from a different country or um, you spoke a different language. And I have always looked back and wished that I had been better as a little girl. Um, and I, I wanted to share that I think we can all do better and we can all create peace and inclusion in any corner of the world that we live or play or work. Because what's really important is that we create a community where everybody feels a sense of belonging and everyone is treated with kindness and respect. And some of us, um, things come really easy. Like for me, things came easier to me because just by looking at me, nobody could see that I was different in any way. Um, and so I wasn't treated differently. And um, that, that means that I have, because things were easier for me, that I have a responsibility to make things easier for other people um, so that our world is a kind place for everyone. The older I get, the more important I realize that is. So that is why this is one of my most favorite books and a book that um, I'm, I'm hoping you enjoy and that you learn something from. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna share my screen and read you on our playground. Okay. Here we go. Um, so uh, let's just make that a bit bigger for you. So this is on our playground, our first talk about prejudice. And it was written by me, Dr. Jillian Roberts, and it was illustrated by Jane Heinrichs, a very, very talented illustrator. Um, it's part of the World Around Us series, which is in Scholastic book. So it's part of the Scholastic Classroom Essentials, if you get the Scholastic Flyer. Um, and it was published by Orca Book Publishers, um, which is a wonderful Canadian children's book publisher. And um, I actually dedicate this book to the Sisters of St. Anne, um, with, who are an order of Catholic nuns, um, who I think are doing wonderful work to make the community a kinder place. So here, here I begin. When you are with other children at school or on the playground, you may hear unkind things being said to or about other people. Sometimes people are teased or made fun of because they're different. Seeing this behavior or hearing these words might make you feel angry, sad, or confused. It's good to question what you hear other people say and how other people act, especially when it feels hurtful. And so the story begins. When I was on the playground today, I saw a boy getting teased and bullied. The other kids were calling him names. I felt bad for him. I understand how you feel, says the adult in this conversation. I feel the same way when I see mean things happening around me. The world can be a complicated and confusing place. It's hard to know what to do in these situations, even as an adult. What is it called when something like this happens? We call this kind of behavior harassment. And when someone is harassed because they are different, it is often due to a prejudice held by the person who is being mean. 
What is harassment? Harassment is when a person says something hurtful to someone else or threatens or intimidates them. It includes a person touching another in a way that they do not want or that makes them feel uncomfortable. What is prejudice? Prejudice is when someone decides what another person is like before getting to know them. Their opinion is based on the person's different religion, race, sex, age, or ability. Why would someone pick on a person for just being different? Picking on someone because they are different, which is acting in a way that is prejudiced, is something people learn. Children who say unkind things probably heard important adults in their lives saying similar things. And those adults may believe that being different is bad. Why do adults say mean things? Adults aren't perfect. Just like children, they make mistakes and can be mean sometimes. And beliefs about other people's differences are often passed along from generation to generation. You may have the same thoughts and feelings as your parents do, who may have the same thoughts and feelings as their parents, your grandparents. These mean or disrespectful ideas can be passed down from one generation to the next without anyone realizing it or thinking about whether these thoughts and feelings are right or wrong. Sometimes people hurt others because they are afraid of what they don't know or don't understand. And sometimes they do it because they were once hurt like that themselves. How did that boy feel when those kids were so mean to him? People who are bullied feel a lot of different emotions, anger, sadness, and fear. They could feel lonely, misunderstood, and excluded. It could be hard for them to get over those bad feelings, especially if mean things happen to them a lot. I felt angry too when I saw what was happening. I think it's wrong. Yes. Harassment and prejudice are wrong. It's natural to feel angry when you see people being hurtful to others. And it's a fact that prejudice is not only wrong, it's illegal. In Canada, section 15 of the Charter of Rights and Freedom says that every individual is equal before and under the law and has the right to the equal protection and equal benefit of the law without discrimination. And in particular, without discrimination based on race, national or ethnic origin, color, religion, age, or mental or physical disability. In the US, the equal protection of laws in the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution is meant to guarantee that every person, regardless of age, race, religion, is treated the same way by the government. Even though there are differences between us, we are all equally important. Each one of us deserves love, respect and equal opportunity, regardless of what we look like, how we sound, or how we live our lives. Learning to understand and appreciate what makes us diverse and to see past differences that may be scary or misunderstood helps us to accept one another as we are. What is diversity? Diversity simply means variety a range of things that are different. If you have a diverse group of children, 
you have a group of kids made up of girls and boys of different ages, racial backgrounds, religions, and abilities. What can I do to help? What could I have done for that boy on the playground? If you see something happening on the playground in your classroom or somewhere else, you can go get a parent, teacher, or adult you trust and ask for help. You can approach the child who has been hurt and check in on them. Introducing yourself if you don't know them or just saying hi might make both of you feel better. I tell you about the pink shirt day. When a ninth grade student in high school in Nova Scotia, Canada was harassed for wearing a pink shirt to, sc to school, two 12th graders at his school, David Shepard and Travis Price, decided to take a stand against bullying. They bought 50 pink shirts at a local store and distributed, distributed them among their friends, and they all wore them to school the next day. These students showed the boy who had been harassed that they supported him and showed the bullies that their actions were not okay. Today, kids and adults in almost 180 countries across the world wear pink shirts on February 28th to symbolize that they will not tolerate bullying. Take some time to look at yourself and to think about whether you have any thoughts or ideas that could be prejudiced or hurtful to others. It can really be difficult to look at ourselves like that, whether we are children or adults, but it's the first step in changing for the better. Sometimes people are really mixed up. They don't understand the difference between right and wrong. But let's be clear, it is always wrong to intentionally hurt someone. And it is always right to try and help those who are hurt. The key to respect and acceptance is understanding. Take time to learn about the many diverse people in the world around us. Look for things we share in common, as well as the differences you can admire or appreciate. There are so many. Then share what you're learning with the other kids and adults in your life. That's right. You can even set a good example for grown-ups. Think carefully when you hear another person say something that sounds like it might be hurtful or based on prejudice. You don't have to believe something just because somebody told you it's true, especially if it feels wrong. Use your own learning and knowledge about the world around you to make up your mind. Or ask grown-ups you trust what they think. We can practice being good role models for the people around us. We can work against prejudice by behaving in ways that are inclusive and respectful of everyone. Ask your friends about their families, their beliefs, their cultures and traditions. If someone has differences you are curious about, ask about them. Understand though that sometimes it's hard to talk about differences. So we need to be respectful if someone doesn't want to share. What is inclusivity? Inclusivity is the practice of acting in ways that include everyone and promote a sense of belonging for all people. An example of inclusivity is when schools have ramps that make it easier for people who use wheelchairs or motorized devices to get in and out of a building. What is respect? Respect is when you think about the feelings, wishes, rights, or traditions of others and of yourself. To respect other people means that you accept their differences and understand that other people are as important as you are. To respect yourself means to believe in your own worth and in standing up for yourself. 
It allows you to recognize when others aren't being kind to you or are acting in a way that makes you uncomfortable. Learning about others, changing for the better, and standing up to prejudice help make the world a safer and more respectful and inclusive place for everyone. And so that's the end of the book. And here is a note for me, talking a little bit more about what I said at the very beginning of reading the book. When I was growing up, it was common to see other kids being bullied on the playground because they were different. Perhaps they looked different or unique in some way, or perhaps they were born in a different country. Whatever the reason, these kids were taunted and teased. And much to my shame, I remember doing nothing. As I grew up, I came to understand that this was not the right choice. A better choice would have been to reach out to these other kids and offer them my friendship. I could have asked them to sit beside me at lunch. I could have invited them to play with my group and with the kids from other countries, I could have tried to learn more about their cultures and traditions. Instead of just watching the bullying happening around me, I could have been a child who made a difference. And so I encourage all the readers of this book to make better choices than I did. You have the power to make your corner of the world a better place. And the world gets to become a better place one corner at a time. So I hope that you have enjoyed listening to On Our Playground. It's a really, really important message. It's a message that I really wanted to share. And it's a goal that I've had in my life to work to become more inclusive and more accepting of differences and trying to become a kinder person the older I get. The older I get, the more I realize just how very, very important that is. And just one last thing, in science class, ask your teacher about biodiversity. So biodiversity is when in nature, there are lots of different species, lots of different types of birds, lots of different types of fish. We know that nature is stronger when there's good biodiversity. So diversity in nature is a good thing. It makes nature stronger and more resilient. I think humankind also needs diversity. I think diversity in humans also makes us stronger and also makes us more resilient. So just ask about that concept and think about that a little bit. It is much better for us when there's lots of different ideas and perspectives and ways of solving problems. It's one of the things that makes us special. So it's something that we should embrace and celebrate. That's something that we should be afraid of. So my final thoughts, if you have any questions or comments or um, stories that you would like to share with me, I would love to hear them. And you can reach out to me to my email, which is drjillianroberts at gmail.com. Um, I'm also on Twitter and Facebook. You can reach me there and message me there as well. Um, I have another book um, coming out next week called My Promise, which is a lovely book, which in some ways is trying to promote the same message, but it's a book for younger children. I wonder what you think of that book as well. So I look forward to keeping in touch. Thank you for reading my books. And until next time, bye for now.